What you doing back here? You awesome. <laughs> yeah, my son. 33 years after the release of Coming to America, Eddie Murphy is back in his royal finery for a belated sequel whose title is the most original thing about it. And while it's nice to see Murphy give his Amundan accent another whirl alongside returning co-stars Arsenio Hall, Sherry Headley, and James Earl Jones, the resultant effort is painless enough but feels less like an essential add-on to a fairly beloved original than a by-the-numbers byproduct of Hollywood's insatiable appetite for pumping out pre-existing brands in slightly new configurations. They're going to sharpen you too, nephew. <laughs> Coming to America picks up 33 years after Prince Akeem tied the knot with his American love, Lisa. Now the proud father of three girls, Akeem is getting ready to ascend to the throne himself. However, when Akeem learns he fathered a child during his visit to Queens, that one time, the traditional Zamundan order of kingly succession is potentially thrown into disarray. And with an impending invasion from neighboring Nextoria, led by Wesley Snipes' General Izzy, Akeem once more hops a plane to the States alongside trusted aide Simi to bring his long-lost son Lavelle back to Zamunda to educate him in the royal ways. What follows is the usual fish-out-of-water antics, albeit in reverse, with Lavelle struggling to adapt to Zamundan life while finding himself maneuvered into the same kind of arranged marriage his dad tried to avoid 30 years ago. To the film's credit, there are some fun bits interspersed throughout thanks to the likable Jermaine Fowler, Leslie Jones, and Tracy Morgan. But the shame of it is that Murphy reteaming with his I Am Dolomite director Craig Brewer, working from a script by, among others, blackish creator Kenya Barris, offered the promise of more. Sadly, Lisa is the character who feels most left by the wayside in the various plot machinations, and it's jarring to see the character who was the entire focus of Akeem's story the first time shunted off to the side like a glorified supporting character. While there is a very much appreciated effort to reframe some of the first film's more glaringly sexist tropes, from a post-millennium perspective, what Coming to America proves more than anything is how treacherous the terrain can be when making comedy sequels. More often than not, they sidestep working to create their own laughs in favor of continuing comedic rifts begun in the initial entry. That's the cinematic equivalent of playing Freebird to a full house, and it's also where the Austin Powers and Meet the Parents sequels fell down. Remember McDowell's Restaurant? Now they're open in Zamunda. And the Queen's Barbershop Trio is back too, along with lusty Reverend Brown. The whole movie goes like that, with any attempt at a fully formed story taking a backseat to a roster of familiar faces and places aimed at firing the nostalgia neurons of its audience. Now, this isn't to say it isn't fun to see, mind you. After all, how could it not be fun having Murphy and Hall back in makeup as the various characters they played in addition to their Zamundan alter egos? Or to see John Amos and Louis Anderson back working at McDowell's? But too often, Coming to America feels like a checklist of familiar elements deemed necessary to bring back or risk the ire of longtime fans. To some extent, this is understandable after 30 plus years of that first film's gags taking on iconic status, but the whole thing takes on a very Brady Christmas vibe after a while, with the eager desire to replay familiar beats robbing the sequel of its freshness. Akeem having an American son he never knew about isn't so much a natural outgrowth of where the original left off than a necessary sop to the sequel gods to allow a different but similar refresh of the premise. It tells you something that the screenwriters felt it necessary to concoct an entire lost scene existing between the frames of the original, complete with some impressive Marvel-style de-aging CGI on both Murphy and Hall to make the essential story beat work, and even then, it only does so because of the game efforts of both Murphy and Fowler. Both actors are great together and deserve a better canvas to act against. Prepare the royal jet. Coming at the tail end of a remarkable run of box office success for Eddie Murphy during the 1980s, Coming to America has remained a fairly beloved entry in the star's catalog even this many years later, so it's easy to see why Hollywood pulled the trigger on the second installment. Murphy remains in fine form, as does Arsenio Hall, and while there's little else in the sequel to justify its existence as anything other than a decades too late cash grab, there's something to be said for the simple pleasures of visiting with Akeem and the other inhabitants of Zamunda once again. Wakanda is a fictional place. Not to everybody. For more movie reviews, check out what we thought of Chaos Walking and Raya the Last Dragon. And as always, be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you like to watch IGN.